Joining me here now from Fox Sports, Hall of Famer, Howie Long. Good to see you, bud. How are you, partner? I'm doing great. How you been? I feel like we're shooting a spaghetti western. Well, I mean, is that, have you, is that, ha, did you ever do a western in your acting career? It's a very bad western. Which one was Dollar that? Dollar for the Dead. Who else was in Dollar for the Emilio Dead? Emilio Estevez. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, he's a sheen. No, you great know, guy. I mean, he's a really sheen. good guy. Shot it in Spain. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, we shot it on the sets where they shot the Clint Eastwood Spaghetti Western. No kidding. Yeah, down in the Mediterranean. They they said it was the Mediterranean. I think it was the, as they say, the rear end of the Mediterranean. Not <laughs> not a good spot. But Al Almeria. Yeah. I think it was. It was really really a good experience though. So had fun. Who did you? Were you the the black hat and Dollar for the Dead? What were uh, you playing Dollar for the Dead? A tortured soul. <laughs> Typecasting. A tortured soul. Howie, yeah. Howie Long here right now. How do you read this game, Howie? We're, we're, we're a few days out. How are you looking at Seattle versus New England for Super Bowl 49 for all the, for all the marbles? Uh, I think it's an intriguing matchup on, on a number of fronts. I think uh, this New England defense uh, with the additions of Revis and Browner was built to beat Denver. Um, this is a different challenge. Uh, it's all about, to me, right now, the front seven and Marshawn Lynch, the read option, Russell Wilson's ability to extend plays. <clears throat> Their dynamic plays come off of the Marshawn Lynch run, Russell Wilson and the read option, and extended plays where your defensive front has to chase, your secondary has to extend their coverage five, six, seven seconds. That's when the explosive plays happen. Sure. If Marshawn Lynch can run, uh, it, you know, it, it presents a lot of problems for New England. Well, couldn't you say the same thing for LeGarrette Blount? If LeGarrette Blount or, or the instrument from the from the backfield of their of New England's choice, because you sure. never know who the yeah. running back du jour is going to be, you just assume it's going to be Blount after what we just saw in the AFC Championship. They've hammered game. home the point New England has that running backs are interchangeable. Um, their ability to kind of morph into something else week to week, half to half, quarter to quarter, series to series, is not only a testament to their coaching staff, but also their players. It's such a, an extraordinary challenge to teach a, just one simple system to a football team on both sides of the ball. When you're a New England Patriot, you have the challenge of having to be multiple. And, and I think it's the same way with their personnel. I can be you, you can be me, we're all interchangeable, Therefore, we're all replaceable. The right guard can be the left guard. The left guard can be the right tackle. So we can always move on from you. And in terms of that, Howie Long, uh, there's always a player on the Patriots roster that Belichick and or McDaniels or whoever else is part of the game planning on either side of the ball, but usually on offense, will just say, this is the guy we're going to use this week because he matches up best for us against player X, Y, or Z. <laughs> Sometimes, like for instance, like it's Tim Wright, right? It's the sure. second tight end. You don't sure. know it could be Vereen, it could be Gray. It might have been Ridley when he was what up and active. What do you prepare for? I don't. That's yeah. That, that, there, there lies the dilemma. But here's the beauty of Seattle's defense. It, it's kind of like you know, I, I go back to the Denver Super Bowl. Uh, you know, Omaha pre-snap shifts. You know, multiple formations. Okay, fine. When you feel like snapping the ball, snap the ball, because this is who we are. We're going to line up in our base defense. Mm -hmm. We're better than you, and we're going to whip you. That's Seattle's philosophy. I follow them very closely. They're in the NFC West. I have a son playing in the NFC West. Yes, you do. I've seen a lot of them on film. I have a great appreciation for the simplicity of their defensive scheme, the tenacity of their scheme, and the accountability they have for one another. And and I, you know, to me, it's all about. Cam Chancellor is the guy. You know, we hear a lot about Richard Sherman, great player. Thomas, great player. Uh, Wagner, great player. Uh, Bennett, one of the most underrated defensive linemen in football. Cam Chancellor is a card-carrying bad man. <laughs> <clears throat> and there's not, you know, even in this week, there's not a lot of card-carrying bad men. Marshawn Lynch is one. LeGarrette Blunt is one. Uh, there are a number of players in this game, but... When Cam Chancellor talks, people listen, uh, and and a lot of times it's the impact that does the talking. Yeah, that's and and he, I guess everyone is assuming will be the guy covering Gronk, or at least part of the scheme to corral that's a tough that cover. other because he's a card-carrying bad man himself. Yeah, Gronk. and he doesn't even know it. 
<laughs> Which makes them maybe even more dangerous, Howie, when you he's, think about it. There's so many players in this game. You know, I, I love Richard Sherman. I, I think he's great. I, I, I love Marshawn Lynch, uh, and a lot's been made of his, you know, not wanting to, to talk or be a part of the, the, the media circus that is <clears throat> media day from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I, I appreciate Marshawn Lynch for what he, there are enough players that want to talk. Right. Players in today's game, they're so media savvy, they're like moths to a light. You flick that light on, they're going to flock to it. Howie Long is here, uh, Fox Sports Hall of Fame defensive and Super Bowl champion as well, right here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And it's interesting how you mentioned how um, running backs in this day and age are fungible, that they are interchangeable in many ways. Even DeMarco Murray, who's going to be on our show on Thursday. Amazing. Right, but he's if it's either him or Dez to fit into the salary cap puzzle for <laughs> Dallas, it appears that Jerry Jones is going to have to re-sign Dez. And the only reason why I bring all of this up is because Marshawn Lynch appears to be the exception to this rule. That he is, that, you, that see, Seattle needs him. They can't just like figure out another way to run the football or it's their scheme and the running back fits it. <coughs> Marshawn Lynch is the it's he's the fuel he is the electricity in many ways he makes everyone Seattle. better he makes everyone better he makes <clears throat> excuse me makes your offensive line better right. he makes your quarterback better he makes your offense run and i would say the emotional pulse of the team is centered around marshawn lynch his ability to impose his will over and here's the thing when you're playing marshawn lynch you better get your head right and you better be prepared for a 15-rounder, not a 12-rounder, not a 10-rounder. And don't pick up your pads at Toys R Us. Bring your big boy pads and get ready for it. Because early on, you know, it's a series of body blows. And, and you see his success in the second half of games. Mm -hmm. He wears people down, and then the explosive plays come. And I, I have so much respect for Russell's ability to forget what's happened. And the NFC Championship game was a great example of that. It just wasn't his day. And for him to make the throws that he made down the stretch and in overtime was nothing short of amazing. Because I think what makes a quarterback as much as anything is not the arm, it's not the heart, it's from the head up, from the neck up. And we could talk about Gronk and we could talk about all these guys in the Legion of Boom. The biggest target, though, of Super Bowl week has to be Terry Bradshaw <laughs> on the roast that's coming up on Friday. Yeah, I mean, I'm not roasting him. You're, you're, so what are you going to do for, I, for I'm this? I'm presenting him with the award. I'm bringing it back full circle mm -hmm. after the uh, the proverbial shooting fish in a barrel. Sure. And so but at you know, the end the, of the Terry Bradshaw <clears throat> roast, yeah. then you come up and present Presenting him. the award. Okay. Here's the thing about Terry, and people don't realize this. People buy that, oh, shucks, yeah. Beverly Hillbillies, just you know, load them up a truck and they move to Beverly. He's one of the smartest people I know. He's, uh, he's an incredibly smart person. So you could, he could spell <clears throat> cat if you gave him the C and the T like cat. Like but here's Hollywood the thing. He, said. He, so much of our show is driven by Terry throwing things up yeah. for you to just hit out of the park. Uh, we're, not a, we're not a heavy rehearsal show. Uh, it, it's, it's more instinctive and more reactionary to what he does and what he says. And... He throws things out there for you to hit out of the park at his own expense. He's a brilliant guy. Now, you do realize, though, in a roast, it doesn't matter if you're not doing roasting, your head needs to be on a swivel because oh, sure. you, you, you know everybody's sure. fair game in a roast. Howard, sure, no right? question. Okay, so you'll, no you'll, question. Be able, you'll be able to receive I'm sure there'll and be not some firestorm jokes yeah. and broken arrow and... Maybe the Western. You could be the uh, dollar for the dead. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Very good. No, I, I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm married. They don't scare me. <laughs> Howie Long is here on the Rich Eisen Show. Thanks so much for coming. You and enjoy that roast. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.